Someone in the trade once said to me, well, cloth is 80% of the reason a customer buys a suit, but it's only 20% of the cost. And that's what our heritage is. is a traditional, what you call a cloth merchant, a provider of cloth for tailors originally. If you go back in time in the 19th century when there were no manufacturers of suits, you needed someone to present a collection of cloth to tailors. You needed someone who could provide small quantities, three yards or six yards or nine yards, and who could present a total collection, cashmere, mohair, suitings, overcoats. Originally our business is French and so I suppose all our cloth really came from France and then we realised rapidly the, the importance of, of British cloth um, and the British, the British mills from Yorkshire and Scotland were very important and in the 1870s we set up our, our business in London in addition to Paris and we created really two poles, two centres, Dorme Paris and Dorme London. When did it all start? Great, great grandfather who came from the north of France and joined a business in 1842 called Dumont Frere. And Dumont had no children interested in their business. And within 10 years, uh, young Dorme had uh, not only joined the business, become a partner in it. In fact, in those days, cloth was, I suppose, a lot less colorful than today. It was substantially heavier. Uh, you'd wear cloths which are, are twice or three times the weight of cloths we wear today. I joined the business in 1972 and since 1972 I remember my first suit must have been a cloth, probably Sportex, which weighed 600 grams per metre, which is 20 ounces. And the cloth I'm wearing today is 300 or 330 grams, 10 or 11 ounces. That's half the weight. Right? So it's about half the weight. So that's the first thing, is that the weight is substantially lighter. The weight of the cloth and hopefully the weight of the suits insofar as the tailors are, we hope, using um, thinner or lighter linings and interlinings to make the suit. I guess 1926 it would have been my grandfather who um, was inspired somewhere to bring colour to suits and to bring the idea of branding a cloth as opposed to just providing cloth to a tailor. We'd say this is a doorman cloth, we want the doorman name to be important to you and we want to give this cloth a brand name. I once said to an American reporter, um, you like going to Savile Row and you get suits made, what, what do you think of them? Do you like them? And he pondered for a while, he said, well, um, if I get three suits made, uh, one will be absolutely outstanding, marvellous, I'll wear it very often. Another one is probably a suit I, I like, I'll wear it now and then. But the third one, he says, is probably something that, for one reason or another, I, I'm not very fond of. It can be also irregular, depending on the day in which the tailor cut it and uh, had gone to bed early the previous day. Was he in an inspired mood when he made the suit? Uh, it's, uh, it's an individually, individually cut suit. The designers were uh, an important factor in bringing off the rack clothing. Um, I think another factor was that the tailors could no longer provide the customers with what they wanted. They weren't able to find workers to make the suits. This is a big problem we have in our tailoring industry, is that there are very few young tailors. A handmade suit will take, we'll say, 40 hours, one week for one person to make. Um, an off-the-rack suit in those days would take five hours and a made to measure suit which was hand cut individually cut to the measurements and to the style that the person wanted might take six or seven hours um, so you could get an individually made suit at a, a reasonable price you might pay 20 25 percent more than off the rack suit but you might still be paying half of what you would pay if you had to go to the tailor for 
for men's designers or men's style and taste, you'd have to say there's either British taste or Italian taste. And British taste is uh, more traditional, more classic, um, and it survived in time, even though it may look stale or outdated. The, the British have nonetheless maintained their presence and are still important to today's fashion. And then there's the more creative, the more colourful side of fashion, which is the Italians, um, which are the Armanis or the Versaces and uh, maybe a Zegna, maybe a Canali and other people who today have produced nice clothes and nice uh, cloth, but which isn't always adaptable. The Italians like cottons, they like linens. In England, uh, you don't see people running around in cotton suits or linen suits. Uh, the climate doesn't dictate that. The, the British way of life doesn't dictate that. Um, so those are the two important poles of fashion today. How do you come up with the cloth for the next season? Uh, technically, two collections come out a year. A spring-summer collection and a winter or fall collection. But fashion is a constant everyday business. Um, my, my functions are more on the commercial and the marketing aspects of the business. But in our business where we're in merchanting, you cannot dissociate selling from styling and buying. You've got to sell what you buy, you've got to buy what you can sell, and the two functions are interrelated. So my brother Dominic, who's uh, the chairman of the group, is the designer, he's the one whose handwriting is on the collections. Um, he's the one who probably has more vision looking forward um, as to where the collections should be and what collections we should have. And I remember one day a lady coming in, this must be right at the beginning of my first years in Paris, um, a lady coming in and asking us for the best material we had. And at that time, the best material, the most expensive material, was Vicuna. Now, Vicuna today is, is outlawed and uh, That's a goat sell. from Argentina or the Andes? From, or from the Andes, from Peru. It's a yes. goat that lives high up in Peru. It's a rare animal that uh, became, well, not close to extinction, but endangered because too many people had killed the Vicuna for its hair, which is rare, and which is finer than that of cashmere in essence. And we said to her, well, how much would you like? Is it for an overcoat or is it perhaps for just a, a coat, a sports coat? And she said, no, how much would I need? I need it for the back of my Rolls Royce to put on the uh, seat to ensure my dogs have a most comfortable ride. 